So uh, as soon as and, we're ready to record. Yeah, we're, we're, we are recording. And if anything comes up for work and you need to run, just say stop and I can stop the recording and go back. <laughs> AFK, AFK. Yeah, AFK, AFK, ASL, ASL, everybody. <laughs> ASL? How'd you get AFK from uh, ASL out of AFK? Be- because I thinking because I was thinking about the chat rooms back in the A A O L. Away from keyboard in age sex location. Yeah, it, they both begin with A, and they both make me think about those days where I used to pretend to be a girl online. Your mind is in the gutter. Always, man. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Jace Down. I am the Couchmaster General. I am John C. Riley. Along with me is my co-host, the man with the golden locks, who uh, who does a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, what was what is your favorite hobby to do? My favorite hobby. You mean besides masturbation? Besides that, my favorite hobby to do would probably be playing video games. If I could just do nothing else, I would probably just want to sit down and play adventure video games for the rest of my life and edit video. So I guess the combination of those two things would be the proper thing. But then I like playing music, too, and I like talking, and I like acting. Oh, my God, there's too just, much. I just wanted one. I just wanted one. I can't. I, I, see, I'm a performer, so I have to answer everything like a douchebag, so I can't answer just with one thing. I need to over-dramatize everything. Ah, uh, so more or less like Joe McHale, huh? Well, my, <laughs> yeah, my uh, my I would have to say that if I could do anything, I would just live stream all day long of me doing things and editing video and providing content for people and trying to make them laugh. Um, besides that, because I have the joke of the day and everything, I know that my jokes are corny, but I, I try my best to see if I can at least chuckle. It did give my uh, one of my friends, Luke, uh, chuckle and uh, made him forget about uh, his travels for a bit because. Um, I guess they shut down and delayed a lot of uh, flights going into Boston. Yeah. He's coming, I think, from Ohio. And uh, he's like, yeah, I needed this man because uh, his head was in the wrong place. So I made him forget about uh, the crappiness of uh, commute I, and flights and all that stuff. I think you basically just said it. I More or less, all those things that I said could just become could, could be summed up to I enjoy making people happy or making people smile. Yeah, I just want to make you smile. But speaking of that, John... I, I think we need to talk. We need to open this up talking about some a bunch of people that have made us smile and laugh for a long fucking time. True, true, very true. Yeah, th- there's been some sad news in the world of podcasting, or not sad, just news. It that, is sad. It's totally sad. It's sad, but over the last couple of days, hearing about where it might potentially just turn into something else, it could end up being a better thing in the long run. And they, that's just potential right now. Potential, that's but potential. as of right now, uh, John and I have oh, there's many websites we like to check out, many different podcasts. But one specific one that we really like was the Spill Crew from from Austin, Texas. They're a bunch of guys, film critics, and guys that initially started a public access TV show to get into free movies. The real deal. The real deal. To get into free movies. And they kind of parlayed that to a partnership with Hollywood.com, and they hired a bunch of people for animators. One of the guy, the lead guy from the group, Corey Coleman, uh, actually worked on Space Jam. He likes to joke. He was the director. Yeah, he says he likes to. He colored in one of Michael Jordan's testicles. I, I heard him say that once. He goes, he goes, I think I, I think I might have colored in one of Jordan's testicles or something like that. Yeah, I would definitely have to say that the uh, the collaborative efforts of the characters known as Corey, Leon, Cyrus co-host and of course in the early days Cargyle and uh, even even small people like uh Alan and Billy yep. um Professor uh, Jeff and Professor the, Jeff the rage select Jason, guys yep little um, Nikki cat who yep everybody people that did, they did the shows like the Leog uh the League of is the League of Extraordinary uh, Extra. What was it called? The League of Extraordinary Ordinary Gentlemen I believe League of Extraordinary Gentlemen a Coco okay. a couple of cold ones Coco, yeah, but of course, you know, along with their movie reviews, uh, they did a lot of animated movie reviews. But of mm-hmm. course, um, I would have to say that me and Phil's favorite podcast, Out of a Mall, we go. We was gotta, Let's Do This. Yeah, we, we got we got to give it. Let's let's give it to him. Let's give it to him. One, one this is for you guys. One, two, three. Let's do this. <laughs> Yelling, I know work. he can, John's unfortunately sitting at work. He can't yell. Damn, Gucci. Sorry. But, um, <laughs> that uh, unbelievable um, hours upon hours of uh, joy. Bullshitting. Um, from uh, that. Oh, let, uh, to be honest with their real names, as far as the real first names, uh, and would be, uh, of course, Corey. Corey oh, always yeah. went by his first name, but co-host, uh, also known as Tony, his real name, 
Um, those guys did a uh, kind of like a show where they break down weird news that was going around. But it was they would take what we're doing and make it like a hundred times funnier yeah. because they oh, were just God. inherently uh, great ball busters and. And, and they had a great following that improved the show by providing them funny clips uh, and just using certain things that built up throughout the years, like um, Fuck Your Thoughts, where they're playing uh, the uh, the power of – was it the power of God? The power of God, yeah. Uh, yeah, the power of God, like, fuck your <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> I'm God. Basically, they, yeah, basically they referred to themselves as the bullshit train, and no two people – poo poo <laughs> No two people on any podcast ever, in my opinion, have been able to bullshit bullshit more entertainingly than uh, than Corey and Tony. They they were just hilarious. It just it just how they would just pick apart each other's day and what happened. Corey's whole thing about his neighbor with the cat and stealing the cat. They're just just simple oh, things that they dude. would just talk about. It was just fucking hilarious. And 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 that was our favorite podcast or two of our I really liked a couple of cold ones, especially yeah, the when the last five years they've been around and they did a lot of great things and all of a sudden Hollywood.com decides that uh they um are going to shut it down. Yep. And it's leaving a lot of people because their first wave of shutdowns was earlier this year. Um was it around PAX? It, yeah, I think I I believe it was around PAX. It was a, it was right before that because I remember they had saved up. They did that PAX fun, Boston, yeah. Yeah, they did that fundraiser to uh, yeah to send Jeff and Jason to uh, to E three E three, and it was right before then that they decided. First of all, Hollywood uh, required Spill to do video games because like, oh, video games is a new thing. You guys got to do video games by nature. The four main Spill guys or the five main Spill guys, Carlisle went on to uh, write right. Sinister. Yeah, right. Awesome, yes, yeah, exactly. right, Sinister, Which is a great movie. And uh, so, Co so the co wrote Sinister, and all of those guys did do movie reviews. And what they would do, they do these long form movie reviews where they would talk about a half an hour to an hour sometimes about a movie, and then they would edit parts of that, similar to what John did at the beginning of the Couch Masters, but it's very time-consuming when you don't have animators to do it. Yeah, yeah. And they would, and they would, and they would uh, do these animations uh, to, to, to them and created cartoon personas for each personality. Uh, that's... And and then they would they proceeded to do more podcasts, which is the stuff that I really love that they did with a couple of cool ones. And then uh, Hollywood.com said, "You guys have to do video games. You guys have to do video games." And and Corey, out of his own pocket, kind of put up and started an upstart with some of the guys that were working on the site on Leog and a couple of the other programs. And, and put of course, the loading bar, put the together the loading bar, which was amazing and really built its own following. And then, as John was pointing out. Uh, Hollywood.com pulled the plug on that and said, "Oh, uh, okay, guys, uh, we this is not working out. Oh uh, yeah, you know, your angry video game nerd's still beating you, and uh, you know, we can't. We're not, even though we're not giving you free access to games, we're not getting you media access. You guys still are doing a great job, but you're fired. And they fired those guys. And since then, the site needed no, to be. They didn't fire him. They made Corey. Fire they made him. Corey fire him. Yeah, they they handed down from above." And from that point, they also made Corey do a lot of changes he didn't necessarily want to do to the site. But just like the Spill guys always do, they took shit and turned it into gold, and you got things like the Daily Spill or Spoiled. Oh, my God. That was so good. As soon as the Reform and all of a sudden they started doing that, that had to have been the one podcast that I would listen to religiously every day and could not wait for the next one because of uh, Corey's, uh, Corey's attitude and his way to bounce stuff off of uh, Cyrus, who always brought the Chris. Uh, funny and the information. Yep. Yes. Who is yes, uh, Chris, uh, also known in the real life. So I guess you know to break it down, their real names were uh, Corey, Martin, Chris, and Tony. And, all together. And uh, Carlisle's name's Robert. Robert. Yeah, Robert Cargill. And and I the reason why I guess I'm I'm being ironclad to call them by their names now, and this is worth mentioning, is that Hollywood.com owns these names and owns the name Spill and owns their cartoon personas and they're kind of putting those to rest. They're making the decision and that's what's really sad about it because they spent eight years, five strong, really working on building this site and building their building their brand and now they kind of, even if they go to start somewhere else as a whole big organization, they need to rebrand. And it's scary. It's scary when people right there because a lot of people working in the wild, wild west that is like, you know, podcasting and everything. And then somebody offer gives them a great opportunity with lots of money and it, it rides high. But then they now own you and they literally can 
like, you know, crush you if they want. And now they own everything. So now you have to start from complete scratch. Yeah. And and they and just just to talk about numbers here for a second, they've built a following of over 50,000 people that are basically regular listeners, 20,000 users to the site, about 50,000 people that uniquely visit and look at the site. And I know people are like, oh, that that think in the millions don't look at that, but that's 50,000 people. That's a lot of fucking people. If I had 10% of that uh, or or 5% of that, 500 people or 5,000 people or something like that, people being interested in what I I do and listen to me every week, I'd be proud. They built it up to 50,000. That's a lot of people. And those guys, those guys are probably more active in their community than any other podcasting personality. And they were out there. big on the community as far as get togethers and mm-hmm. their reach as far as from the United States all the way to even like Kiev and like Ukraine and, and, um, uh, Prague. Like he was able to t- like do meetups in Prague with people. Yep. That's the craziest thing because he would travel around everywhere and there, they had spill get togethers in, uh, in, uh, Europe it just it was really cool to see how a lot of different fans were there so i just know that you know a lot of people have um you know just taken it differently I, i'm i'm internally sad but you know i i'm pretty sure that they will bounce back and be able to uh be a better show um and uh but more with more control with more right control there. over what they want to do they won't necessarily have to do movie reviews they've learned their lessons so yeah and and i i wish i wish them the best because they to me they are some of the best at doing what we do and and there's and i hope they land on their feet and they all are together in some way i still need i have to listen to the new Coco that just came out today uh so that should be interesting to hear what leon's opinions are what's leon's real name Martin, Martin, what Martin's opinions are on everything. And I, and I, I look forward to what they do next. I'm similar to John. I was very sad about it, especially the day one of the announcements. And then a drunk Corey in the evening of the first thing starts putting out. <laughs> I these ain't amazing. going out like I that. I ain't going out like that. He starts out the, the call and show the next day. He doesn't even talk. He just plays the song and starts rapping to it and stuff. So Corey's inspired to do something. I and, hope so. And that's good. I hope so too. And and from anybody that's that I've read interviews or read uh, things about people talking about working with Corey, they say he's one of the best guys out there. So he hopefully he lands on his feet, and he's someone that takes care of his friends. So hopefully all those guys will be able to get somewhere else and be able to make some money. I mean, even yeah. if it's on the Nerdist Network or something like that, someone needs yeah, to pick I, them I up. I thought about that this morning. That would have been awesome to see. But I think that I don't even know where to put them because Camille Nanjiani and Emily B. Gordon, uh, the couple, they mm-hmm. do um, – uh, their video game uh, podcast for themselves, the indoor kids. So I don't know where they would fit in um, if they were bought like like kind of like a, as a, you can't even buy them as a brand now because the, fact the brand's that they gone. Put, yeah, they, yes, they, the brand is gone. They would so have to negotiate that with Hollywood, and that's just a big. It's bu- it's much like we've seen the example because when Professor Jeff in the loading bar and Jason left, I'm glad, I'm glad Jason used his own name, but uh, Jeff can no longer call himself Professor Jeff because that is a brand from hollywood.com but uh i think to to move on with the podcast i think it was just the last funny thing that i remember there's a show on twit.tv uh it's a uh it's called this week in tv tv uh it's a live streaming um tech channel and they do a uh a show strangely enough called nsfw or nominally safe for work or the new show new show new sauce for the webinets uh it's not necessarily goes by the not safe for work but it's hosted by brian brushwood and um there, um, no one is allowed to cuss on the show or make any dirty words. And uh, do you know who was responsible for that? Who's that? Corey. Oh, that's I know. I know Bushwood's been on uh, been on Spill a couple of yeah, times. Yeah, Brian, Brian Brushwood, Brushwood is the yeah. host along with uh, Justin Robert Young. But uh, Martin and Corey were on the show, and they're the reason why they now have censorship because I think they dropped the N word a bunch of times. <laughs> they couldn't stop saying uh, it was a Christmas episode actually, and uh, the shit and. And just dropping, uh, dropping expletives, and it, they were just so bad. So now they have the swear belt. So every time someone <laughs> drops a swear, they, uh, they either have to cut it out or they play the the um, the belt song. And yeah, just to close it out for me, that's that's what makes those guys great. Not because they curse, like just because they're so natural and honest, and that comes through in their podcast. I don't know them personally, but from any spilios that have met them personally, say their personalities are very true to what you hear in the podcast. There's not a lot of putting on there they can't help but be themselves and and again i just wish them the best in the future and you guys are fucking awesome all right moving on what do we have next phil what do we have next john 
<laughs> we're talking about the VGX, the uh, video game awards that were on the other night on Spike the Television. The travesty that is the VGX. Oh, my God. I, I turned it on for five minutes and I had to shut it off, John. I really well, did. That's probably the right amount that you uh, – <laughs> I think the right, uh, right dose for that because instead of last year uh, going with the whole theater um, experience, they decided to do it in one small studio. Almost like just imagine if the soup did video game awards. <laughs> it was just pretty bad because I think that uh, Joel McHale was out of his elements and it was just really awkward because it was really quiet. And also being in a smaller studio, they extended it to three hours. So it, it, I think that halfway through – uh, I think that he probably was drinking heavily and probably <laughs> wanted to, like, you know, kill himself because he was acting like that. He acted like he just did not care, like he was, like, out of it. And um, it was, here, here's the weirdest thing. They gave away the game of the year after the first hour of a three-hour broadcast. So what's I think the, they'd probably wait until the end. You you think all these years, how many years of the Emmys, or the 75 years, something like that, that the Emmys or the Oscars have been doing awards? You think you learn certain things over 75 years that you put the biggest award at the end so you force people to watch your stupid show through the whole time? I yeah. don't know. It's, it's just, it's unfortunate. But the thing is, there could have been a lot of... Um, a lot of other good candidates for the hosting duties because, uh, yeah, granted, if you want to get a host that's a good host, like, you know, like Neil Patrick Harris or We're not like Jimmy Rick Fallon Gervais. or something. Yeah, exactly. Somebody that actually is involved with the video game community. And, of course, that's my nerd side showing out saying, choose Blair Herder <laughs> or uh, the DCD said a drunk Chris Hardwick, which um, – I don't think he ever drinks. So he hasn't drank in like 10 years or like even somebody like I, my my main candidate that I thought would have been great would Blair Herder from mm -hmm. uh, X-Play right before they uh, can, right before they canned uh, G4. But uh, a person that's heavily into video games, uh, Skyrim addict, uh, him and his wife, I think it's Jessica Chobot. I think uh, I think that's his wife, but she's also a huge video game um, uh, addict. I wouldn't say nerd, but addict itself. Have being... the nerd. Ask uh, James Rolfe to host the fucking thing. Ask exactly. Me. Just having certain people right there. But, like, you know, I, I just think that he was out of his – and I, I guess he realized that after, like, an hour and a half. And the fact that, like, you know, I'm not even going to get into the uh, – I'll glance really quickly over the nominees. But the fact that everything involved in the clips were just – just full of douche, like the fact that disrespect toward uh, Reggie. And like, he's like, um, they're doing their, uh, I guess, the Doritos King, uh, whatever his name was. I, I, I could care less. The guy who was co hosting it with Joe McHale, like while they were talking, while him and Reggie were talking, Joe McHale just blurts out, So, are you going to introduce this guy next to you? And Reggie's like, um, That's your job. <laughs> You're the host. And uh, uh, it's just. It's just weird. And along with that and the loiter squad and um, the really bad presentation of all the winners. It's, a it's just – we have a clip. Like you have like a – Yeah, a, I do, I do have a clip. clip. And it's just – it's, I'll play it in a second. It's just a shame because this – this not that the award show was great the last couple of years, but being in the big award spectrum, it kind of gave you an alternate, an interesting video, uh, award show that was about video games. And I kind of enjoy the – being someone that enjoys the award show – format to a certain extent it john's right if they hire a good host and that puts some interesting bits together and actually gives a shit about the material it could be a very fun evening of celebrating even if somebody who doesn't care about the material makes it uh as a good host but it is honest and like thorough they don't need to be snarky you don't need to make yeah. fun of the people from telltale games you don't need to make fun of uh of uh, rational games and make dumb things and say, is this coming out for Atari? You know, no one really cares about what, like, if it makes you laugh, screw you. All right. You're, 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 it, you're literally lighting a fire. Um, that is the internet and they will hate you for that. You, you will become a meme. Yep. You will. And forever you will be known as that. You said it in passing, not that he would be perfect for this, but I think, I think if you need, if you need to look up how to be a host, watch Neil Patrick Harris, no matter exactly. what, no matter exactly. what he's doing, even if he doesn't give a shit as much about the material, he's putting his heart into it and giving you his best. He's an entertainer. Yep. He is, uh, uh, it's it's but it's just crazy. Well, why don't okay. you? Uh, yeah, let me play, play this a clip. Bit of the clip. This is uh this is uh John. Cut me off when you will because there's 16 minutes here. So just let me know. Yeah, when yeah. You just want go, to... run to the middle and then just press play. Okay, cool. Run to the middle and push play. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much anywhere. Anywhere in this thing is probably. So here cool. we here we go. 
Right, plus those big world premieres are still coming. Titanfall and The Witcher 3 world premieres are still ahead. You guys are not going to want to miss uh, when those impact. And later, Character of the Year is awarded. It's selected by fans during the show. Will it be a rebooted Laura Croft, the Para Brothers, the Dimension Hopping, the Test Twins, or... The See, I have to pause for a second because the visual is important here. Joel McHale's just sitting uncomfortably next to this guy that's talking about video with his, <laughs> arm, with his arms crossed, with his mouth both tight like he's like so uncomfortable here like he can't couldn't be more fucking he made a joke about being coming out of a uh a drug coma and having his, his wife waking him up from a drug coma saying that he's hosting a video game award for nerds it's like Dude, what okay or Cape from blue jasmine I, unfortunately not nominated oh Bill. i love that game though blue jasmine. Blue jasmine. Doing it. are you gonna have like crazy sex scenes between brother and sister like in the show. The show has crazy sex scenes? I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> pretty psychotic fan. What? Would be a, You're a psychotic fan. Be, uh, I really like the show a lot. And w wait, if I wait a minute. This isn't like uh, Chris Hardwick was sick one week on The Talking Dead, so they had this guy sit in. This is The Talking like, Dead. And that the format was all wrong. It's like, dude, why are you sitting down like it's The Talking Dead? It's like uh, in a living room. You should be wearing a suit. You should be on a stage. You should be welcoming people up in there and letting them do it instead of you doing this. Just be a, like a host and let them go. It's like let Reggie and his associate, like, you know, run. Show them Cranky Kong. Just do it. Yeah. Let let Titanfall come in. Let uh, Gone Home people. Let like you know uh, as far as just oh my God, it's like you know the new crossover because one of the new cool, um, yeah, it was oh man, what was it that uh, that new game that's actually with uh, Jack Black and um, Eli Elijah Wood and everything, and it's just like this really visually nice, beautiful game. And like this guy is just like trying to show us off his game and how great it is, and like he's like, so are you doing drugs when you're making this? And the guy's just he he, he just he looks so awkward. Well, he's just like, um, no, actually, no. It's I, like I think it's safe to say that certain kind of humor works in certain kind of contexts. In this kind of thing, the humor you need to make something like this work is very broad, very funny. There's, there doesn't even seem to be an audience there to react to the jokes, so you're dealing with, like, the dead silence. Oh, no, you were First high name you of this at all. Have a talking spoon. I was eating cereal when I thought of this idea. Right, and not high. Does he look high? He's talking to his spoon. It's pretty impressive. All right, and by the way, Joel, you are... That, that was the part he was talking about there. So there's this game that with a really cool visual that has this uh, kid eating from a colorful spoon, and Joel McHale's trying to be like, were you on drugs when you made this game? And again, there's no audience that's doing that. No, I mean, no one could make that sound funny, let alone someone that just doesn't sound like he cares. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. Uh, Joel McHale, is it good or bad? bad? Well, I'll let you read some of the tweets. <laughs> it's called Broken Age. Broken Age. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you, Tim. This it looks, looks awesome. Uh, this is great. Other than that blurry part. Uh, it's a monitor. Even yeah. in the future, people haven't figured out how to do it. Well, once Tim fixes the game, it's going to be great. Uh, Elijah Wood. What? Wow, Elijah Wood. What, I, what a jerk, right? Yeah, he made rice crispy treats, as you notice, just <laughs> to make great. us look fat. And he, too bad he knows nothing about the adventure genre. He, actually, he plays them a lot. Even Why more than young... Uh, All right, shut it up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't listen. So... So you're making a, a joke about the Lord of the Rings movie, and the guy doesn't get that you're making the joke, so he's like, oh, actually, Elijah Wood plays a lot of games. You, you, that's why you can't make passing like references. You don't make jokes. It's almost like trying to poke fun and make jokes with the creator of Fez. <laughs> that guy's just uh, zero funny, or like the guy who created Braid. I don't see the creator of Braid, because after watching the indie game, the movie, I don't see the guy who created Braid having a sense of humor. He's a very odd person. So trying to communicate with people like that, not to say the game uh, developers are weird, but certain people are are different. And I and trying to, it's it almost feels like you're picking on, like they're they're trying their best to combat people picking on them. But the game they're talking about is Broken Age. Yeah, and, it looks um, cool. Jack Black. Elijah Wood, Will Wheaton, a lot of great, uh, cool uh, people involved in this game. And it just looks so, like, colorful. Kind of like, um, I don't know, it's got a braid aspect. It's got a lot of really cool, uh, it's, it's um, I don't know how to explain it, but it just, it looks like, like a very colorful game, like Braid is, um, and the elements of that. I'm not really quite sure what the actual storyline is about, but, um, you know, I, I'm willing to, like, just because 
a lot of games itself look beautiful and the gameplay looks easy enough where you can just sit down there and just have hours and hours of replay replayability. Oh, I just can't get over how bad this award show was because it's not an award show. It seemed like a really bad pilot for a for the Chevy Ch- for a remake of the Chevy Chase show. Thank you, thank you. Like you know, it just it looked like this shouldn't have really been aired. Yeah. Like you know, because. Like I, I was hyped up for it, and then I realized that it's like in this format, and it's really going on for way too long. It's like, all right, we're 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 gonna pass on that. It's like, it's and everybody, it's you know, it's easy to make fun of the VGX and stuff. But um, um, I I did another podcast last night where we talked a lot about the bad choices they made as far as uh, um, the Winners, nominees yeah. and stuff. But it's like. Uh, I, I didn't fully put across my uh, my views of how bad I thought the production was. Just coming from a tech standpoint, or Trump, as somebody trying to create something like yeah. new material, new media, filming stuff, you want to make something that's that's good. I I, I can't I can't completely I, be an asshole to people because I, I don't do that job. But given that opportunity, I'm pretty sure that I could have probably you know, and a lot of people. Had better ideas, and I and I hear what you, I I hear what you're saying, and I agree with you, and and but I I think what you were saying made me think of something though that I do respect them for trying to do yeah. something different with uh, an award show format. That I just I think they had the wrong host, and I think some of the choices and as you were said from a production value, I think if they had some smarter people working on how to present that it could have been well if they edited it tighter if it was shorter because of that instead of being three hours was an hour and a half tight pro tight you know edited thing that's entertaining and snappy and you have like a funny host like a legitimate funny host that can yeah and there was more music in the background because every time they came back and they did announcements it was quiet it was quiet i mean i i appreciate trying to not do the same old award show being like oh yeah we need people's attention spans are shorter we need to do something but it was a fail and actually a present how it actually manifested into reality yeah but uh, to, to sum it up um the uh, Grand Theft Auto Five uh, won Game of the Year award. I don't know if um, having yeah, a special tribute to them in a song or whatever had anything to do with that. Granted, yes, it is a good game, but uh, yeah. and the replayability <laughs> is there. But uh, I just I think that there's more, a lot more factors that they missed as far as story and uh, gameplay. Um, yeah, they they got gameplay and replayability. Yes, and um, cool a cool story. But there are were there were better. Uh, games that I, I thought because um I literally thought out of the three games that were uh, I thought were at the top were uh, The Last of Us, Spy Shock Infinite, and uh, GTA Five. But going with that game, it's like I can understand. I'm not happy, but we we you digress. Can, but yeah, like, you could you could see how people that are into, understandable that are in, yeah that are into Grand Theft Auto could see that see it as the game of the year because the story was really great the characterization was awesome i loved how you could switch between the characters that was a great touch yeah and i loved in the online worked a lot better than previous uh versions my problem with grand theft auto games are the same problem i've had since i played the first or the first 3d environment one on the playstation 2 i just get bored of that kind of game rather yeah. quickly i find all the missions very similar they're all chase missions there's i just don't find a lot of uh the, the uniqueness is in running around and doing crazy shit and i always find myself just doing that and then i get bored of that easy and then i shut it off and, yeah and but it's a great game and if you're into that it's it's perfect to me rockstar's best games are red dead and bully because they're genre games and i feel like this the atmosphere lends to different kinds of uh storytelling and different kinds of gameplay but that's just my personal taste i can't argue with someone that says grand theft auto was the best game last year because it was fucking awesome it was a lot of time no, was, got put yeah. into it it's a, a lot of time put into that and uh some of the, my favorite ones as far as uh best voiceover uh best voiceover our um actor it was kind of where uh, troy baker was uh nominated for two two of the games inside there so it's almost like it was the guy who played trevor <laughs> uh, it was uh, Troy for um, playing Booker in Bioshock Infinite yep. and then also playing uh, Joel inside The Last of Us. And uh, who was the other actor? It was uh, – I can't remember the other person. It's not important. Yeah. But uh, we all know that uh, uh, yeah, that Troy won and then, of course, his um, – his, uh, uh, what do you call it? Co-star inside The Last of Us. So they swept the voice acting because I thought that uh, overall that was uh, my favorite game of 2013 just because but of course 
Yeah, I don't even want to get into it. I was just about to go back to uh, Game of the Year, but <laughs> moving on. Um, I, I, I actually thought that it was kind of a ripoff that Grand Theft Auto V won Best Soundtrack because it's complete. It's it's horse poop because the thing is they <laughs> bought those game they bought those songs for the game. I couldn't agree with you more. And man. all the other nominees were original scores for games. Nino Kunis was great. Bioshocks was great. Um, and uh, oh man, I, it seems like I never have the full complete because I'm not looking the list. I'm just going by memory and yeah. stuff. But it bothers me when that happens in movies as well or in certain musicals when they don't have unique songs and they just use classic rock songs and they get like yeah. own, and, and they win awards. Like or these something. songs are already popular. You put them together. It's like you. It's it's cheating. Yeah, it's cheating. It, it is cheating. It's <laughs> absolutely cheating. So they should have an original score inside there or like, you know, or just do away with best soundtrack. But soundtrack should consist of soundtrack score, not the stuff that's in the game itself right there. But I digress. Um, and uh, the last thing I'll touch upon there, there were a bunch of other um, like, you know, best um, best indie game was gone home. Yeah. Best action adventure game was uh, the uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag. Um, awesome game. Awesome. My favorite. Uh, best game on X. Do you know? Do you know what was an unbelievable un- upset? Uh, best game for Xbox 360 was uh, uh, Brothers. Really? Yeah, that was that would that won best on Xbox, and of course, The Last of Us won for best game on PS3. Of course. But I'm just glad that when it came to best shooter, Battlefield 4 and <laughs> and uh, Call of Duty Ghosts did not win, and it went to Bioshock. So good, I'm good. very happy about that. But um, there were uh, some, yeah, it was just they they went through a lot of different awards, but those were just primarily the highlights of that. But um, I'm pretty sure that everybody else is doing their. This is how you can fix it. I'm pretty sure that Francis, the video game, uh, the angry video game guy, is uh, out there, and um, I think he posted a video, but. Um, I wonder, it would be great to see two sides of that. Francis, like, you know, because Francis is a, ca- a character that he does, and um, that's not his real persona, but I would love to see two different sides, how Francis feels about it and how, how his real personality mm-hmm. feels about that because he's a very well-spoken uh, gamer and a, a game reviewer. Uh, I don't I don't. It's weird to kind of consider people on YouTube who do reviews and do videos as journalists. I would like to because I would. Fi- I see them as new media journalists. Yeah, I, so. I consider them, especially the ones that are doing good work, uh, like like K Wing, Black Nerd. There are a lot of people out there that I consider reporters that are out Jay there. J Boogie, yeah, J Boogie, Boogie is his uh, YouTube. Uh, so I, I think if you go onto YouTube, J Boogie, like he is considered, I would have to say, a new media journalist. PewDiePie is not. Yeah, there's certain people PewDiePie that are. PewDiePie was also another person that was completely. There's a difference between being an entertainer and a reporter, and it becomes obvious in certain people's. You, uh, in the way they make videos, in the way if you're doing it for entertainment sake first and reporting sake second, and that's why I think there needs to be higher standards if you're judging video and media content people. But there is a definite difference between if you're doing something for reporting value or for entertainment value. Yeah, Boogie2988. I just want to make sure I specifically have that in there. Um, the uh, What do you call it? And uh, he actually came out with a new video that was just uploaded nine hours ago called Open Letter about the VGX to Jeff uh, Keighley, Game Trailers and Spike TV. And I think that it was actually um, – let me see. I think it's actually him. I think it's actually Boogie. It, th- this is the first year that they've done the award show uh, because the station shut down. I'm blanking on the, the uh, G4. G4 shut down. So this is the first year that Spike has had full control yeah, over the this Spike. thing. Spike. So, so it, it's going to be interesting what what happens next year to see how much they t- how much they go. Oh, we don't give a fuck what everyone says. Uh, we own this property now. <laughs> or if they actually listen to the the community and all the people that are trying to help out to make to give it the best production possible. Yeah. It'll be interesting just to see what happens. I did just a quick check. Uh, Boogie two nine eight eight is doing the open letter of two VGX and Jeff Keeley game trailers and everybody involved in the thing as himself. So uh, that is actually good. I definitely would check that out, uh, guys, because he he's amazing. I he has a funny character, but he also uh, you know very uh, like um, like uh, movie Bob movie Bob out there on YouTube. Uh, very. Uh, I wouldn't say overthinkers, but very eloquent when they have to mm-hmm. talk about stuff. They are the true people that are kind of like the newest trailblazers um, when it comes to new media journalists. But moving on. Yeah. Geekvolution, okay. too. Geekvolution. Check out that guy. Anyways, yeah, yes, to move yes. on. 
Okay, now, um, how we, uh, I think that, oh, I was trying to say, like, you know, we can definitely um, do one story, this particular story, and then segue into the other part that I would talk about, but I'll let you take this. Okay, um, the, apparently, uh, people are spying on us. Yeah, I've, I read this story today, and it's all over the news. I don't have it in front of me. We're, this show is, uh, John and I are going from memory here. This is uh, the magic memory show. But uh, apparently on the Xbox 360, but more specifically in the World of Warcraft, there are more people hiding in the shadows other than the rogues invisible behind you getting ready to sack you. It is the, the government, the NSA, the FBI, everyone, or whoever, all those groups, all those initials are infiltrating the World of Warcraft to spy on people and they try to befriend people to try to catch terrorists. Doing doing <laughs> terrorist actions. That's what's been going on. I guess it's been going on since 2008. It's just coming out now, and Blizzard's coming out and saying that they had absolutely no knowledge of this. And and we and I wonder what the legal ramifications of this are. Are there going to be problems? Are there going to be issues with this? I, I'm. It's it's a little weird that they're that they're diving in there and, and spying on people. And it makes me wonder if is 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 there ha- is the World of Warcraft, a high bed for terrorist action. I mean, it has. Do they have any evidence that? I, uh, you know, it's it's just weird. But, but according to Kotaku's article that they actually posted uh, today at around eight thirty uh, eight thirty five this morning, it says American and British spies infiltrated World of Warcraft and Second Life using the games. Um, to monitor what they think are terrorist communications, mm. uh, where they recruit informers and gather data communications between players. According to classified documents uncovered by nonprofit investigative journalist organization ProPublica, Xbox Live activity was also monitored by the agencies, which included the FBI and the CIA <laughs> in the United States. A spokesperson from Blizzard Entertainment, makers of World of Warcraft, yep. said that neither National Security Agency nor the United Kingdom of Government communications headquarters had gotten blizzard's permission to gather intelligence on the game microsoft spokesperson declined to comment while current and former executives at second life makers linden labs are also declining comments hmm. so blizzard's the only one that's coming out to have the balls to say the guy go- because they're like fuck you government we're blizzard we have so much money because <laughs> you know what's weird blizzard probably may be the only person that was not known yeah maybe they probably didn't like that i'm pretty sure that microsoft probably would have given up that stuff because they said the spying was so prolific, according to the documents, American agencies had to make a special efforts to keep their operatives from bumping into each other in Jesus the in-world. Christ. For all the snooping, it turned out uh, no counterterrorism successes. According to the documents in unofficial context by ProPublica, it seems like they wasted a bunch of different things. And I know I've seen in the news that they've wasted, and they, they pretty much not only as far as government, uh, phone tappings, computers – watching histories now they're <laughs> jumping into online video games and i'm pretty sure it would be weird um but uh you know that was during the period where the i was pl- yeah I, it, it makes me wonder yeah that's a good question who gave him the idea for that I, that was during the period when i was playing when they started out was so. al-qaeda putting together meetings together via chat I, on I, fifa no i don't i very very much die. i know they're like they were like using uh using chat through uh madden games you know are you <laughs> monitoring that oh i'm using the raiders there was the raiders versus the buccaneers all those games got monitored who did they where did they decide when did they decide to do this and why it it's all you're getting in warcraft i mean i don't I don't get it. I don't. It's, I don't. It's, it's kind of funny because you know it's not like we really should give a shit because we're not really te- we're not terrorists. No, no, so no. So we shouldn't really care what the NSA does. But you got to think about it in this way. Uh, you know, it's one thing when people are uh, are checking out our our phones and our computers, but when they're actually going into like you know. Um, Online gameplay and expecting to find certain stuff there. So that like, means some of the people that you bump into in the World of Warcraft in the middle of in the middle of Dalaran City or whatever it is, you, that level seventy nine mage could, could be could be huh. a government NSA guy. That guy that's killing you at right at the grave. That's grave stalking. You think they get you? into it? You yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like, like, like are they? Are, like I've been attacked. Like a noob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're the people calling me a noob, yelling in Baron's chat at me. Is that the government? Is the no, government? I'm gonna send it 
the email. I'm going to crack into his <laughs> Gmail account and then send him a reply to himself. So when he opens up his mailbox, he's going to see an email. He's going to get all weirded out because, why wow, I didn't remember sending an email to myself saying I suck. <laughs> My friend Dworkin had someone hack into his account and steal all of his gold and supplies in Warcraft. Was that the NSA? He was like, I don't know how they got my got into my account, and now it makes sense. It was probably the NSA stealing his shit. Oh, because he, he could... probably just downloaded a bad raid. Yeah, whatever. No, it was definitely the NSA. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every time I died, it was the FBI. They, they, they were screwing me over. Jesus Christ. But not only World of Warcraft, uh, uh, you, you, don't you have a story about another one of these MMOs that apparently the government isn't? infiltrating with uh well it's it's new who knows maybe they created it to spy on more people but uh y- you know what everquest <laughs> is right yeah yeah, all yeah familiar with everquest yeah, and how yeah. how old it's been around how how old of a game it is and how you know it was around when i was a uh, young lad it was one but of the first mmos yeah oh yeah definitely yeah. this mmo is actually making a comeback in two different ways of course uh they're working right now it's in production so they are looking for beta testers is everquest next which is going to be the next chapter, new, uh, the next, I wouldn't say next gen, but the new, it's going to breathe new life into EverQuest. And I know a lot of people playing on other uh, drivers like 1999 and a lot of older servers, but it looks like a lot of fun to be played as, but the second part of their release is they're actually creating a thing called EverQuest Next Landmark, which is their answer to Minecraft. Hmm. So it's actually able to create your own EverQuest maps and worlds, like kind of like in Minecraft, but in more in a practical situation, being able to use this inside the game itself. So not only are you going to be possibly able to help them build the game uh, by being a fan of beta testing it, but also you get to build shapes. You build, you can build circles and arcs and round things, which you cannot do in Minecraft. So that got me excited. And I also like the cool thing that the Avatar, you get to see them moving around stuff, almost like they're like a Jedi moving the Force <laughs> around and stuff. So, and also uh, building stuff is definitely cut down because they were showing how fast they can build certain things. But I definitely applied to EverQuest Next Landmark, so I'm waiting to see if I can actually get beta access to check this out. More from that later on. But I I, it's it's weird and interesting that uh, I'm like a lot of different MMOs like uh, World of Warcraft um, have uh, significant drops in yep. their uh, their um, membership. It's because so, yeah, go it's ahead. because the game style kind of is stale to a sense that that you have to go out, you have really low level characters, you have to upgrade it by by just farming and doing like lots of busy work, and, and that's why I wanted to talk to you when you posted something. I couldn't tell if you were serious or not about possibly wanting to do the warcraft uh the war oh yeah that was hysterical yeah that was a, that was almost a bad mistake that yeah yeah just just yeah. just ask that suddenly the warcraft animals come out. oh yeah come on join the join the party john all the all the uh stalkers come in but it's like it, driving drunk not a good idea you wouldn't you wouldn't enjoy it you couldn't get you wouldn't be able to get past the beginning but they have they have uh Fast lined it a little bit to make it a little easier and a little less. Yeah, but the thing is, you've got to get the expansions and everything to actually get up to the proper what 89, 90, 90 level, level or something. By like getting that. the treasure chest, I dropped off at eighty. My my character in limbo somewhere in the Warcraft servers is that. Also, you got to get Mister Pandaria, and you got to, and they're also another one coming up. But the thing is, the whole seventy percent off that they were offering around Black Friday, Thanksgiving, yeah, that great. You can get it for four ninety nine, but then you got to get these other ones that are probably ten, fifteen dollars, yeah, and you're, and you're paying a monthly fee to play. Exactly. Exactly, which I don't think EverQuest Next is going to be a pay-to-play per monthly. I think it may be a free service. Don't quote me on that. It could be wrong. They could change it when the actual game comes out. But I do and, know that it's, it's it's an interesting aspect that I would love checking out. Because and, and yeah, the, and the customization of, of your landscape is something that looks really cool and is something that could be potentially really game-breaking to add life into that dying genre. Yeah, totally. Okay, well... Now is the time of the show where we play a uh, ridiculous clip that's usually audio-based that uh, gets you a little chuckle. It's not a joke of the day, but we always like to have something that's audio-based that makes people either cringe or laugh. <laughs> Today we have an Irish gentleman who uh, seems to uh, – he looks at a person he's about to fight, and he recognizes something. In him. So I just thought it was a hysterical uh, little audio clip. If Phil, if you could play that. Yeah, here we go. Why is out there? I was in a town before called um, Langan Village, it was called. And basically, there was a young lad, and he looked awful similar to me. I thought I was fighting in the mirror, right? Come outside the nightclub. I was like, do I know you from somewhere? And he goes, do I know you? Do you know? And he had, he had a Celtic jersey on, but he had, he had the green and the yellow one, right? 
And I was, I was about to throw a punch. And then he, he, he looked at me in the eyes and I go, do I? And he goes, am I your father? I said to him, and he goes to me, am I your son? And we just hugged it out. It turns out that no relation at all. And I just headbutted him and he got taken away. <laughs> but you know, it goes to show you, people are out there, you could know them. <laughs> I definitely enjoyed it because it has a very funny ending. So, oh my God, uh, because that's it just, hilarious. You think he's going to hug it out and it's all going to end. All of a sudden he's like, oh, I found out I didn't know. So I just had it about it and they took him away. <laughs> that is fucking hilarious. That, that's how that someone should uh, hook up that audio to a scene of Luke and uh, Darth Vader and, and have, and have uh, Darth Va- Luke do that to Darth Vader. Just are, you my, are you my father? Oh, are, you are, father. You, are you my son? No. Are you my father? Push out. Oh, you dumbass. And then I cut off his arm and then he uh, eventually killed me later on with the force. That's awesome. That was, that was very funny. Very funny audio. But that was very funny because I found that on Reddit. You guys could get a wealth of information on Reddit and all the different fun stuff. Okay, moving on to our, our last, I think, well, um, second to last topic. This is a more important thing that I don't want to delve too more on because I don't want to make any. Uh, uh, enemies. <laughs> I, I like to go certain places without anybody giving me guff. But um, the previous uh, short podcast that I uh, posted uh, back in May of 2013, I talked about the uh, Penny Arcade Expo uh, Kickstarter uh, for their uh, podcast downloadable content and how they were trying to raise money. Their initial goal was $10. Eventually, they were able to raise 230000 230, Three hundred and sixty dollars for Bam. that, and it was uh, and there was no mention inside there for anything else. They would just say, "We want to bring it back," and uh, I uh, just shitted on it because it's like these guys did not look enthusiastic whatsoever bringing it back. And every time they showed clips, I don't know why they showed clips during this uh, video, the the drama response. People were like. I love the podcast. Like, well, you killed off one of my favorite things, man. I love the podcast. When is it coming back? And they're like, yeah, we're not even thinking about that. And <laughs> like, and all of a sudden, yeah, well, I guess we're thinking about bringing it back and stuff. They just look so like, like it, it was almost like if Stephen Wright, like Stephen <laughs> Wright getting happy. You don't see Stephen Wright getting happy. It's like, oh, wow, cool. But um, <laughs> this- uh, they eventually raised all that money, and um, uh, I I forgot about it. And um, then all of a sudden I found this on my uh, – it was right as I was posting this online because I thought it would be funny because um, – not funny but informative because it, it kind of pissed me off because I actually uh, listened to it. <laughs> and you think that like you know a podcast that's been away for a couple of – like three years that everybody loves so much and then they raise so much money for it wouldn't suck so much. <laughs> but literally they talked about one game but then they talked about atheism and then uh, hanging around with like their parents, and it was just like it literally it it was horrendous to listen to. And you think that it would have been great to have it like, hey, welcome back, uh, downloadable content. We're great. We're so happy to be around everybody, and thank you very much for all your support. It's just like they it literally sounded like uh, so. On some of the podcast, um, they they say, got any questions? Send us an email. So I thought I was emailing the actual guys that are involved with the podcast. Mm-hmm. So I sent him an email and said, can you tell me why there's a but? Oh, yeah. Here's the other fucking thing that just uh, infuriated me and made me want to post that thing more is the fact that they have a um, – along with the podcast being posted and they raise their money, they have a button next to each podcast saying pay what you want. Pay what you want. Meaning they they're still looking for money for people, and it says pay what you want or no, I want it for free. And um, so I sent him an email. I said, "Can you tell me why there's a button next to each podcast that says pay as you uh, pay as you uh, pay what you want? Wasn't there a Kickstarter where you raised two hundred thirty six hundred thirty dollars, two hundred thirty thousand six hundred thirty dollars? Don't you think that's enough to do a free podcast? Uh, I heard uh, the first podcast back, and it was not good." The format was bad, and it sounded like a secret recording where neither person knew they had to be entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, but uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, uh, the person that responded to me in a really quick email was uh, Mr. Robert Koo, the man who runs uh, Penny Arcade Expo. And it, was, it kind of frightened me a little bit because he goes, JC, if you want to pay nothing, you can certainly do that. There's a free download link there. And I go – and I literally thanked him. But uh, I asked him, um, um, thank you for a speedy answer, but uh, what gives, uh, well, but why give the option when your Kickstarter was so successful? 
uh, blah, 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 being, uh, I wouldn't say I was condescending, but I was just inquisitive because he's like, um, I just feel like having to pay what you want is kind of a slap in the face to everyone considering the money you raise to specifically bring it back should be enough. Um, and if you had a fundraiser button, like if you had a fundraiser and did not have a button, I would support it. Uh, donations toward fee, uh, server fees and bandwidth, blah blah blah. I was just—I don't want to read specifically for it because it just seems like I was like being kind of an asshole. Like, <laughs> well, why are you doing this? He's like, so he sent me a very long email about this and um, uh, talking about how he's been running this business for ten years and uh, he's not armchair quarterbacking this company. Um, he's running it completely, but. The one thing I wanted to point out is the money that they raised for this podcast is not specifically going exclusively for this podcast. Um, it's going to uh, run the company itself. So um, where is it in this like uh, – um, uh, right and here. That, and while John looks at that, that's, that's my biggest issue with the whole thing. Forget the specifics. I don't care if it's Penny Arcade or some indie movie that's talking about – that, that's the danger that you fall into when you donate to Kickstarter. I'm not telling you not to, but be very specific in what you read. And I think it. I think there just needs to be more safeguards in place that that people don't use Kickstarter for nefarious reasons or for or for the bait and switch to to be like, oh, I want to fund this thing, and then okay, but only a percentage of this is going to that. The rest of it's going to just different means. Oh, we're only giving a thousand dollars. We asked for ten dollars, so we're only putting ten dollars to the uh, to the podcast. The rest of the two hundred and thirty thousand dollars is going to something else because we only asked for ten dollars, so that's all we have to put into the thing. I don't. I mean, I don't know the rules of Kickstarter the, uh, specifically. What he pair of paraphrased um i don't think anyone can truly understand what's under the hood of a business without actually being inside of it no one knows how much overhead is how much our bandwidth costs are how much health insurance for our employees are how much rent it is for our office space uh etc i've been in this business for 10 years and i couldn't comfortably uh comfortably arm back quarterback uh armchair quarterback this uh, or another company without actually looking into how they run because mm-hmm. so that line literally is telling me that you know yeah it, it, i guess the people who contributed this podcast what uh, i can just understand by saying um maybe they said in the bylines or whatever but the money they raised for that particular podcast is going to run the company not exclusively for the podcast itself but you know, I understand that's fine. He talks about how, like, you know, if T-shirt sales are doing better, 10% better, so let's drop the price uh, by toys by 10% to compensate. That just wouldn't make any sense. I don't know where he got that. He talks about how uh, um, how uh, they generated a lot of stuff for charity. Yes, that is that is correct. Absolutely. Um, but um, he, the, those are tax write-offs. He so. makes a lot of good points, but the problem yeah. is in the Kickstarter was specifically for the podcast. Then if Penny Arcade needs some help to run, you're damn right. They'd make a million dollars if if just Penny Arcade put out a Kickstarter being like, oh, I think we they did actually. They, they didn't make a million dollars, but they made a lot of money in support of uh, certain things. But uh, – he broke. I think, think the last thing um, I wanted to just talk about as far as he goes. Uh, but if you wanted to think about it another way, think about this: the Kickstarter and the uh, for and the DLC downloadable content podcast was for those backers. We didn't have to, uh, nor are we were we in, uh, under any obligation to release it to anyone but those that paid for it. Uh, should everyone else benefit for uh, what everyone else paid for? We thought it was fine to just do a two-week delay. Looking at holistically, I have absolutely no problems having a donation button, which, by the way, should be clarified, what you're looking at is a page for non-backers. So he's, it's literally saying like, you know, uh, you know what I much rather would have had that as just a members only because I, then I would have been like, oh, you're right. You know, that must have been a great podcast and everything. But it's like, I don't know. It, 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 I don't want to cause any enemies and stuff, and I'm pretty sure no one like Robert Koo or anybody would ever listen to this. <laughs> and if <laughs> they are, thank thank you for all the hard work you do. <laughs> yeah, it's just no, no, seriously. Thank you very much because – no, that's what I said after um, my reply to him was just thank you very much for this email. I hope you have a nice holiday season uh, to just kind of like wrap it up and stuff because he is a business person. Yeah. But it just – it got me a little weirded out because it the just news feels a that little... along with um, Spill.com going away, uh, PAR is going away. So uh, PAR is the Penny Arcade Report was shut down, 
And uh, it may have had something to do with Tycho saying that um, I don't want to grow my business or this business anymore. Uh, I sort of want to do the opposite. Uh, it's because a lot of these businessmen are saying that, saying that these that these companies or this pop, this bit, this this flash to the to video games, to movies, to media being such a such a point of culture. They're saying it's reached a peak and can no, go nowhere but down. So any more money that they put into these businesses, they're going to start losing money instead of because they've reached, they've made as much as they possibly could right now. So we'll just have interns do it for free. Exactly. It, it, it frick exactly. And let's just start to kind of, uh, make sure we know what all of our businesses are and focus on the prime directive and get as much money in as we possibly can. Let's suck them dry and then flush them down the toilet. And, and, but yeah, I don't want to make any enemies either. And, and not talking about specifics, they have a business. I'm to just, run. Yeah. We're, we're just uh, viewing this. I'm not like spouting venom and vitriol. Yeah. I'm just reaching this as trying to understand this in a, yeah. I wouldn't call myself a journalist, but you could, consider it through a journalist point of view meaning or just a consumer gamer fan point of view because you're trying to understand it's like if somebody it like if i raise if like it's a bait and switch it's i'm looking at it like a reporter yeah. and it seems like it stinks a little bit on this one a little bit i maybe it maybe it's above me and i don't quite understand it but from my perspective it looks like they asked for money for one thing and then they switched it over to another thing that's just what it seems like to me and I don't know if this analogy would be true if, if I saw a friend of mine give a friend uh, a winning scroll, a lottery ticket, and that person won a thousand dollars, and then they go ahead and ask that same person, "Hey, can I borrow some money? I have no money." Or uh, I don't know. It's just it seems like no. That's probably a bad analogy. It's horrible. <laughs> that's that's horrible. That's horrible. But the thing is, they 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 received some money. I'm just because the thing is, Mister uh, Mister Robert Koo. I'm just I was just trying to understand it at that point because it just seems like a lot of people are downsizing a lot of great material as far as your editorials and your journalistic point of view as far as PAR with the uh, Penny Arcade reports uh, that goes away and hopefully it wasn't had it didn't have anything to do with um, budget cuts and hopefully it was just a purely creative uh, choice reasons, yeah. creative uh, choice to uh, to move on without Pierre, without Ben Cachera, and a lot of uh, other different things that involve PAR, because, um, uh, and he's he's absolutely right. I have no idea how much it costs to yeah, run. No, no, we. That's uh, why. I, that's why I said we don't. We're, there's certain things that maybe we don't know business wise, and and we understand that it's just what John was doing, and it makes perfect sense asking questions. I'm because, yeah. I'm just asking questions, man. I'm just asking questions. I'm. Uh, I have no sway. I'm not somebody who's going to post this anonymously on Reddit and just create like an epic feed yeah. where like oh just hate hate hate. <laughs> it's just like I'm just curious, man. That and I do uh, I do if he is actually listening to this or if it ever gets back to him. I do appreciate your time answering all my questions. I may have not have understood or enjoyed the responses, but uh, it or have understood them, not liked them, understood them. But I do appreciate your time. I think it was on like a Sunday night or something. That you uh, uh they answered it, but um yeah, uh that's weird. It's it's just it's it's a bunch of weird stuff. It's like um I don't know. I'm trying to make the most of it, but moving on, I shouldn't delve on that. I should just move on. Move from, on. Move on. Move on and out. But the last story I thought was a little weird that I saw. I think I saw it on Reddit in the video portion. Uh, live streaming. A lot of people um uh, sometimes are really safe. Um. Live streaming it. I've seen funny aspects where, like, you know, uh, people trick the person live streaming into believing that they're there. But sometimes people can leave themselves open for people tracking. Are them you talking down. about that little kid one where where some guys talking to the talking? It's like little, I'm at the window. I'm at the window, and you see the poor little kid run to the window. It was <laughs> when he was on the playroom on PS4's Twitch, because a lot of people don't use that correctly, but people who do use it correctly. Use it for uh, a lot of and. Uh, they have a good base of fans watching them play, whether it be League of Legends. But a, a particular Twitch.tv streamer called Swifty, um, he was live streaming, I think, League of Legends. I could be wrong. could have been World of Warcraft or Dota. But it was one of those games. And uh, somebody decided to, uh, in the chat room, decided to uh, place a fake uh, or a prank call to uh, 911 saying that this – because they apparently they got his information, his real information, like his name and where he lives. 
And they called 911 and said that this person threatened them with a knife. It was an FBI and, agent. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, while he was live streaming, the cops do the, the cop. Like that bang on the door and cop stuff. Cop knock. He goes, the cop knock. And he goes to the door and answers that. And he's like, uh, yeah, we had a, uh, a call that you threatened them with a weapon. And he's like, uh, I've been online streaming this game for like a couple hours. How could I have done that? And instead of like agreeing, okay, cool, and making sense, common sense. No, they uh, literally, you could hear in the background of the stream him getting handcuffed and then taking him away. Wow. And if it wasn't for his friend there just hanging out, it's literally – it was crazy because this guy gets literally arrested. And it's sad because his friend there who was just hanging around with him had to pick up the stream and end and end it. So it's like let me see if I can play a little bit of the uh, – no, actually I can't really play the end of it but um, unless I would send it to you. But literally his friend was just distraught. He's like, um, thanks. Th- thank you very much, whoever did that. You're, uh, you're a real cool guy. Thanks for calling in a fake uh, – Big prank call to um to nine one one and having my friend arrested. Well, I so. hope the I hope the end of the story ends with this kid getting off and and then the other kid getting arrested because that's some fucking bullshit. Yeah, it, 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 it sucks because like uh, let me see if I can just send it to you yeah, real send it, quick. Send me that. Send me that. Uh, copy link address uh, and I'll just send this real quick. But well, yeah, we talked a lot. Of, we 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 did a lot of talk in this show. Yeah, we did straight, straight, straight out like a lot, like a good back and forth. Let me because we're trying to we're trying to keep the torch alive for let's do this. Yeah, this is this was a very if this was a very let's do this type of show. Let me. Now, uh, who who would be who would be Corey? Who would be co-host? Uh, I think I think we have a good uh, good 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 balance. It depends. It depends what depends what we're doing. We switch. I think off. we're probably we're probably a Coco. We're probably more or less like Martin and uh, Corey. And Corey, but like uh, I I guess if I compare myself to anybody on Spill, I'd probably be be more of a Cyrus a Cyrus yeah. Corey ish, cross between the two of them. Like, but uh, but but I, but I I honestly just from an inspiration standpoint, uh, I. I would I would say all of them have had some sort of influence on me. I, I know you're very you're very much a co-host. <laughs> oh, dude, I love I love that man. That man like, makes me laugh. <laughs> like no like no one's fucking like business. no. Uh, speaking of that, go out and uh, everybody when you listen to this, go out, check them out, download all the episodes you can of Let's yep, Do This or do Coco it. or anything from you uh, from not YouTube but iTunes. Do iTunes, it now. Get it Whatever's because left because at the end of the month it's going all away. All the content's going away. Yeah, there are people that are that are busy right now that are working to 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 archive sit, to archive it to so there'll be torrents and shit available at some point, but but, but do please. me a favor, go out and download all their podcasts and so you can listen to them and and keep the faith alive because I know that there'll always be people out there. But so you know. here, so here is uh, here is the Swifty getting arrested on live stream. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. oh, just uh, fast forward a little bit to like the middle. To the middle. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's the kind of thing that. For pizza, maybe taco. No, that's the kind of way that that cops ring a doorbell. Okay, those are the guys inside the chat room um, uh, that are that he's playing with. Okay, let's go. Producing a live, like yeah. television right there. Yeah. yeah. So he understands. Yeah, what I do, uh, you know what live streaming is, right? Oh yeah, that's what. That's what oh, I there mean. it is. Yeah, he's talking to the cops. No, absolutely. No, no, I'm asking this. I think. So yeah, right now he's talking to the cops off camera. You can't really hear it. Did you say Stephen Jenkins? Wow. Okay, I'm going to fast forward a little yeah, bit. Yeah, fast forward to uh, about um, the last um, four minutes. The last four minutes? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So I was like, why would I have to do it? And they said, you have to go. So, good job, guys. Let me he, has a, he had to go to the police. They... They arrested him. He had to go and like file some reports, and then they said that. So I was like, "Why would I have to do it?" And they said, "You have to go." So, good job, guys. You guys are pretty awesome. And for the people, I guess that 
that I'm watching the stream. Like, I'm sorry you guys had to deal with this, but dude, it just messed up. Okay, you can cut it off right okay, there. Okay, now, 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 the only thing that I that that of course my friggin' mind goes to is if this was if they pulled a prank. If if these other guys had like someone fake arrest the dude and pull the prank, it would be pretty funny. But that's just the first thing that flashed into my mind. I would be like, but but if it isn't a prank and someone really did this, that's yeah, because it looked too awkward to be a prank. Because it did that guy did not know because he and he doesn't even know how to end the stream. Yeah, he's all like looking at the computer and like I don't know how to stop it. And I'm like, and he he just he just looks shook it up. But the thing is, you're hearing that, but it. It's not like there wasn't like a dialogue between him and the, and there wasn't like and if you want to get more sensational, uh, there wasn't like a struggle or right. people yelling or yeah. get on the ground. It was no, just it was it quiet. seemed it did seem real. It was it was very it was very real. And I I seriously hope whoever reported that and that's the dangers you find in live streaming at this point in time because you, really people can say and do anything that they want out there right now like someone and can do they that get your information they find it through ip address yeah, or whatnot and they don't like you they can like total troll you like and get you send pieces to your house or just mess with you and stuff and it happens to uh popular people out there on live streams or people that just you know have no idea what they're doing i.e the playground to me this is break playground. this to me this is breaking the first rule of fight club you don't you don't talk about fight club or whatever forget that but you don't bring it out of the world. I mean, tro like I never. I'm not not someone that has any problem with internet trolls. You want to be an internet troll, be an internet troll. Sometimes trolls are funny. They can be funny, but you don't break out of that world. You don't break it into real life. Just troll because we've all developed to, like tough skin. Yeah, you don't call the cops on somebody that doesn't yeah. deserve. I mean, that's bre that's breaking the rules. You know what I mean? That's that's again to go back to something earlier in the show. That's cheating. That's that's making it too real. You know, fucking it, troll them. Send them hate mail. You know, You're going from troll to asshole to asshole. Yeah, it's it's funny. This funny, 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 funny asshole. Now you're an asshole. Yeah, and I actually thought this was a couple years ago, but it actually just happened. Um, it's it published on December third, twenty thirteen. So it just started at the uh, literally like last week. Yeah, that's fu that's fucked up. And now, don't do that shit. Don't just don't do it. A lot of people are saying it's a publicity stunt, but you know, it, it's why would somebody do that as a publicity stunt? Because you know, uh, if they uh, they're trying to get their name out and stuff, but if it's a, but also here's another perfect example, guys. Um, I'll probably link this in the uh, in the YouTube um, uh, YouTube post and also in uh, uh, Mixcloud. The fact that like if they were going to uh, do this, they you think they would have been able to capture it better? Like a better quality picture because the picture is – they literally say, so sorry for the crappy quality, but it's not really relevant. Tried to remove the freezes in this club. I also did not well because it's there's internet hiccups. Uh, there's pauses. There's a lot of stuff that shows that like somebody was just by chance uh, capturing this, whether it be on Camtasia yeah. or whatever, and they just caught something that was just like, oh, crap. Yeah, this – it's – it's uh you get – it's just fucked up. Again, it's, that's all I can think about. It's just breaking the rules. It's breaking the rules of of trolling. You're 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 going a step too far. Troll etiquette. I don't think yeah. there, that exists. It it should. It fucking should. There should be rules like like how the mafia at one point in time when everyone was going crazy they sat no down. No women, no kids. Or yeah, they and they wrote the rules of the street. There needs to be rules to trolling. <laughs> 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 I, I've declared there needs to be a rule book. Someone this needs to write guy this. says the rules to trolling. Yeah, that that will be a book. Uh, I got to work on the book. Okay, I think that uh, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's about good. all the time we have. I think we can end it up right now. Yep. Uh, you can find me at Jace Down on Twitter, uh, the Couch Masters on Facebook, which is uh, facebookcom slash merry you can also find us uh, at uh, YouTube uh, for the Couch Masters. I think it's uh, uh, YouTube.com slash Chase Down Show. Yeah. Yeah, or you can or you can also just enter the Couch Masters, and I think it's perfect. Yeah, I think and it comes also, up. Uh, yeah, and don't bother finding me on Facebook because I'm not a good friend requesting. <laughs> And uh, Phil? Yeah, you can find me on uh, Facebook if you search The Issues Program. On Twitter, I got Issues Man. Or find any of my stuff at issuesprogram.com.
Cool. All right. Well, uh, there is no Jesse. No, Je- Jesse's. Jesse, we're all very busy. That's the reason why my my audio quality sucks because I'm actually doing this from my office. Yeah, and we and we didn't want to go two weeks without a show. We last week we took a holiday break because of Thanksgiving and a lot of uh, misscheduling, and I was sick as a fucking dog. And uh, this week uh, Jesse's kind of altering to get. We're all very busy right now, and I decided to take my lunch break to record a show, so exactly. it doesn't interrupt my work. And I'm still able to uh, put another one in the books because I had a lot of stuff to talk about because a lot of stuff has happened in this last yeah, week. Yeah, we need we need to get out here and talk about a bunch of stuff. Rest that in was peace, on our Mandela. Mind. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. Uh, rest in peace, Spill. Uh, rest in peace, Brian. Who's coming back? Who's coming oh, back? Yeah, Brian yeah. We week. and we talked to him, and I believe if we can rewind the tape specifically, I mean, we were all talking about it, but Jesse and I specifically said that this was going to be happening. And, the, and you could kind of tell it by the way the writers were talking about it when they first talked about the project. They, they were just saying, it's uh, someone proposed it in the writer's room, we thought it would be a funny couple of episodes. So the, so that's basically yeah, actually, it. They, uh, according to a lot of people, according to words, don't quote me on this, according to the buzz on the internet, they who speak on the internet that he's coming back on December 15th. Yeah, for the Christmas, for the Christmas episode. episode. So definitely check it out. I could be completely wrong because December 15th could be um, a uh, not a Sunday. Yeah, so. whenever the one around then let's is. See, let's see. I'm going to look it on the yeah. calendar to see so, if I can So, yeah, basically, basically what he said, the rumor, nope. I, heard the, I heard the same December one. December 15th is a Sunday, so we are. Stewie wants one thing for Christmas, and he wants exactly. one That's thing exactly back. That's exactly what the uh, the rumor is is gone around. So that'd be great. And also, they also said he's also in the script for a couple other stories in the new year, like uh, his new relationship with uh, Maya Rudolph's character that will be introduced in the uh, next year. So, all right, we're going to go. Okay, yeah. Go yeah, talk to you guys later. Later. Bye. All right, buddy, it's the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening. Just a side note, Spill.com is still open and operational until the end of the month. So, I um, after listening to it, it sounded like uh, they were gone forever. But no, they are still around. Please check them out. Spill.com. They are around until the end of the month. Download every episode that you can because once they're gone, they're gone. And the only way you'll be able to find them is on YouTube or maybe uh, Nigel Duncan or any super fan would probably post them via torrents or fan sites. Okay? So, uh, yeah. It may disappear, so please, please check them out. They're awesome. They're still around. Keep the faith alive. Give it as Christmas gifts. Whatever you do, just God damn it, take care of these guys. And I know they'll be back, but we want to capture the moments. Capture that picture of awesomeness. All right, guys. Later.